Thank you for the nice introduction. So I'm going to give the two talks for the price of one. So first, I will wear the hat of the Strategic Advisory Committee and give a brief summary of the observations and recommendations that found by the committee. So let's start with the general observations from the last review that's about three years ago. And obviously, commercial cloud services have mushroomed. That's one of the events that happened. And data science or big science become an important tool in science and also business. And also, I mean, the privacy issue in cyber, cyberspace has become a very important issue in our life. But if you just go to specifically the SurfNet, then there has been contractual, uh, contractual issues with the Siena, and also they have gone through this uh, organization, organizational changes within the SurfNet. So there has been lots of things has been going around for the last three years. Uh, despite that, SurfNet delivered the results. So SurfNet strongly innovated. This is the finding that the committee found. So, I mean, to specifically, they have been successfully carried out various initiatives. Some of the examples are, I guess, the people here are very well know of, is Enlighten Your Research Project. Uh, Enlighten Your Research. This is a way to find uh, uh, more novel cases of using IT to support your research. And they have been providing multi-service port approach to integrate light paths and uh, internet services. And also, Serve Connect has been kind of leading example of the collaboration infrastructure around the world. And also, I mean, they have been leading many of the international networking initiatives. Uh, for example, it was uh, the transatlantic links of NM100G. So, I mean, the committee found that I mean, SurfNet has delivered the results, and they should be happy and content with what they have achieved. But then, well, we have to start to look at the future now. Okay, there are many trends, but one of the trends the committee found is that network technology becomes mature and is evolving even more rapidly. So basically, you need somebody that can take advantage of this leading edge or bleeding edge technology and apply them to deliver the service that's a little bit ahead of the commodity services. So that's the that's critical entity. And I mean, who else is the better for the role than SurfNet? SurfNet over the last few decades has been doing the, doing the job very successfully, and including the last incarnation of SurfNet 7. So com committees don't see any other option but the SurfNet to continue to take the role. But eh, heaven forbid, if they decide not to, I mean, that's the, what we found is that Dutch networking innovation, I mean, SurfNet, I mean, I guess all the, all the members of the committee agree that this is the best in the world, and that innovation will be gone. And not only for the Dutch community, but international partnership should also disappear. So, I mean, we just hope this is nothing we just want to, want to see happen. Okay. And, but for them to continue, I mean, funding is, the, is one of the major issues there. I mean, you, it's just wanting to do the research, or the basic research on the networking, but to assemble and integrate and just make it happen, it's a totally different story, and that neither just order or magnitude different type of funding there. So we, the, the, the committee feels that the, the funding has to be set aside to carry out the mission. Okay. And so this is the last note that is kind of summary of just what I have described. Right, so then I'm going to change my hat. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a stupid manager. I don't know how to change this PowerPoint slide anymore. Okay. So I'm just now wearing a different hat as a director general of the National Institute of Supercomputing and Networking. So I want to give a kind of overview of e-infrastructure activities in Korea now. Okay. So let me start with, a, with an incident in Korea. This is a cover of a Korean newspaper. And you shouldn't focus on the pretty lady there, but the headline. The headlines say, Korea is a super blind. 
what happened is that there was no system from Korea that made top 500 list at that time. And this was pretty depressing because we used to have about 10 systems in top 500 list. So we all know that supercomputing is an important tool to enhance the competitiveness of country. So obviously, Korea is not doing a good job. So something has to be done. So that's the motivation for the Supercomputing Act. This is our, one of our, our attempts to do it. So, so basically, the, the discussion for the necessary need for such an act goes back to the 90s. But in early 2000, the issue was raised in various committees of the National Assembly of Korea. And uh, we got a little momentum when the bill was proposed in the regular session of the National Assembly of Korea in 2009. And it has to went through the committees and subcommittees and hearings and so on. And it was approved in the general meeting, general session, in uh, April of 11. And it was enacted in the June of 2011. So, I mean, I was leading the whole process and it was pretty unique experience. I mean, how many, time, how many chances do you have to have a law, to make a law in your life? It was really interesting to work with the politicians and high-ranking officials. And I learned a lot. And uh, there are many interesting stories. And also, you cannot argue the success. I mean, I'm not sure about the politicians in, in Netherlands, but this was the only law that the committee passed in a two-year period of time. And uh, this period of two years, is supposed is considered pretty fast in Korean standard. So, so, so what is the bill about? The official title is the utilization and promotion of national supercomputing. That's the title, and the goal is we we all agree on to enhance people's quality of life and economic competitiveness by the use of the supercomputing. Okay, so how to achieve the goal? The key action is basically try to establish and execute the comprehensive plan for the national supercomputing ecosystem. So there are two types of plans. One is a master plan that's every five years, and implementation plan for the every year. So to have the weight on this plan, so this, uh, we have set up national supercomputing committee. So the chairman of the committee is the secretary of the Ministry of Science, ICT, and Future Planning. So we have a this ministry has a long name, so in Korea we either call MSIP or Minister of Future, like a Harry Potter movie. And the vice minister of the all uh, uh, vice minister of the nine other ministries are all the member, and about the same number of experts. So, so about this, this 20 people committee is the one that's making the, all the final decision about the whole supercomputing ecosystem, including networks there. And also one other organization we have set up is the National Supercomputing Center. So they need some entity to support the planning and execution of the, of the plan. So, so what is a plan? So I mean, the law was passed in 2011. So we are busy in setting up the pl master plan. So this, this humble looking document is a cover of, cover of national plan. So this is five years from 2013 to 17, and you see the name of the all the ministries involved. So basically, we have three strategies or three areas. So first one is the to expand adoption and to build the inf efficient infrastructure and R&D on key technology. So these are the three areas we are going to address and to become so-called top seven nation by 2017. So if you expand a little further of the, all these strategies, so each strategy is uh, expanded into 10 programs. So for the case of the expanding adoption, we have four programs. The first one is the enhanced adoption basically in national, national R&D programs. Uh, second one is the enhanced adoption in private sector. Third one is public sector. And the last one is that we realize that people's perception, general public's perception, of computing is very important to have a, have a major impact. So that's, that's classified as one of separate programs. 
So regarding the infrastructure, basically there are three. First one is the let's have national scale resource planning of the computing and networking, and then build shared infrastructure across the nation, and the human resources are trained. I mean, uh, program is one other thing. So for the case of the R&D, the first one is to build a Korean supercomputer system. That's the first one. And second one is to just try to do R&D on key areas. And no ecosystem is complete without local industry. So we have a program that's supporting local industries. So this is a three area and 10 programs. And then next year is the implementation plan. Basically, what is happening is that, so this one is for the case of the area of the enhanced adoption, and you see four programs. And then what is written in blue is the, is the, is the project that's under the programs. So I wouldn't bother with the details, but basically this is summary. So there are about 48 projects that's carried out for the year of 2013. And there's a modest increase of funding to 40 to 60 million dollars. And but so basically, but what we want to happen is that we want to have some jump. And that is what this big scale project, I mean they are they are on the plan and they will start from next year. So the biggest one is so-called Super Korea 2020, we'll have a 200 million dollar budget, and we have a, a national supercomputing shared structure and about the education training programs. I'm going to say a little more about these programs later. Okay. So about the, my institute. So basically the mission and the function of my institute is written in the law. So that's a good and bad thing. So basically the mission is to support the whole thing, support the, the, this government effort of building on Korean ecosystems. And to carry out that we are given uh, several functions. For example, I mean, Securing and operating world-class computing resources, one of the functions we have to do is written the law. And also, same for the network. So we have to uh, provide uh, uh, advanced research network too. Also, we have to carry out the R&D and the supercomputing. So these are the missions that we have to given from, from the law. And we had an inauguration ceremony by the end of 2012. And we are very happy that we have many friends around the world in the US, in the Europe, and Japan, and China, that gave us uh, congratulated messages there. So, I mean, this is, I mean, the, the, how my organization is structured there. So basically, we have three centers and one department. Service center is the one that is providing computing, supercomputing services, nationwide supercomputing services there. And network center is providing na nationwide network services. And we have separate R&D center that carrying out researches uh, both on computing and networking. And when, then we have a strategy department that is, one role is to work with the government of the setting up the plan and execution, and the other to support the whole organization. That's the, so we have three center and one department. So when I just see the, how, how things are going on at, at SURF, so if you compare, a service center is basically SURF Sarah, and network center is a SURF NAT. I don't know what R&D center is here. But okay. All right, so, and in terms of statistics, there are about 200 people working for me, and I feel like uh, I'm working for 200 people. <laughs> and about half of, them, half of them permanent, and about 80% have that more than master's degrees there. So the budget is about $50 million, and that's this per year. And this is not including the capital for the machine and the new data center we are building. So if you include everything, it will be like a 60, 65 million dollars per year. So, so then I'll just go on to say just computing and network infrastructure in Korea. So this is what we have now as a kind of shared computing infrastructure. So we have a 21 systems from 10 organizations that give the shared of 300 about 400 teraflop capacity there. And it looks good, but the, the problem is that, you see, out of 394, 340 came from one organization, that's me. So this is certainly not a balanced infrastructure there. So, so that's, we think this as a kind of pilot, this is what we have now, okay? But what we are going to build on is not 
this one, but it's just try to build on top of this. And that is written in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the master plan. So basically, we are trying to have a three hierarchy of centers. So national centers, and specialized center, and regional centers. I guess in, in the European language, it's a tier zero and tier one and tier two centers. Yeah. So I mean, national center, I mean, that's, uh, that's us. We'll have, this, have the leading, uh, leadership, leadership type computing facility there. And specialized center will be support small to medium scale problems there. And regional centers are supporting every individual institute. Okay. So we are trying to build this whole ecosystem out of, uh, out of now. So this is what we are going to build in uh, five years' time. So by 2017, what we are going to have is that we are going to have one national center and three spe specialized centers and four regional centers there. So what is shown is, uh, is to try to ha have an analogy with the train system. So. But I mean, not only the computing, but we're trying to expand the services there. So what we have now is we have pretty much only one service, is HPC service. But what, what we are trying to add on is that right now we are very close to um, providing uh, production level service of H HT service, like uh, this is more on the, on the parameter stripping or something like that. And also we are adding, trying to add two more services. One is the uh, data intensive computing services that for the particular application, particular group of applications, and all the cloud services there too. So this is the, the vision we have until 2017 there. Okay. So uh, the Super Korea 2020, uh, my ministry doesn't want to say too much about it, but this is basically, I, what I can summarize is a large scale HP project in Korea. And total budget is $200 million, and starting from next year for five years. And it has two goals. One is to procure the leadership system. That's, which, that's the system I'm going to operate. And then Korean super, build the Korean supercomputers. So uh, there was about $110 million allocated for the, for the leadership system, and about $90 million allocated for the, for the building the, the Korean supercomputers there. So, well. The, uh, this is as far as I can say with the permission from the ministry. Okay, so and one other thing is that, I mean, this system is massive and it doesn't fit in, in my current building. So we have to build a new data center just for the machine. And this is what I'm going to have uh, next uh, first half of next year. So what the nice thing about my office is I can look at the construction every day and see the, all the progress there. So, I mean, this, what is building now is the, this is a basement. So basically, this is one ground floor and two, three, three, three layer buildings, okay? So the first layer is nearly complete, okay? So I, I mean, I can certainly see if there's anything wrong, then I can just, just bug the guy who is in charge. So I assure you that it is, 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 is under, under progress, okay? So, then, okay, that's probably enough about the network, uh, enough of computing, and let's go to the, to the network. So let me start with the, with the commercial network situation in general. So, I mean, Korea has been catching up in the last few decades, right? So this is one of the examples that if you look at fixed line subscription, so, I mean, 1960s, when I was born, Korea was the poor country, and... So, I mean, the, this number is about one-tenth of world average, okay? And in 20 years, it reached world average. And in another 20 years, it's three times of the world average now. Okay? And the same similar thing that can be said to, to Internet. So in 95, so it was, it's about one-fifth of the world average. And in, in four years, it becomes the average, reached the average of developed nations. And in two years, it becomes number, two, number three in the world. So we are just catching up pretty fast now. So I guess we are at this point of trying, we are just remaining in the leading group. So I did a little survey. So these are just, for example, if you compare, let's say, fixed broadband penetration. So Netherlands is number two in the world, and Korea is number five. Uh, both countries are far ahead of the world averages, right? So. And, but if you just look at the, like, the mobile broadband, 
Korea is number four in the world, and Netherlands is six, number 20. And, but still both are far above all the averages. But if you look at, I cannot imagine this happened, but if you look at the number of individuals who are using the internet, I couldn't imagine, judging from my son's behavior, I cannot imagine any country using more internet than Korea. <laughs> but obviously, Netherlands do. So they are number five in the world, and Korea is following with the number 18. Okay? So in some sense, like a score is Netherlands two, Korea one. <laughs> Okay, so it's, I admit that you beat us, but not much, not much, not much by much, much margin. So we are trying. Okay, so this is one of the things we are trying. What about the fixed line broadband? Broadband is one of the emphasis in Korea. There's a project called the BCN, Broadband Convergence Network, and it was completed in 2010. So out of the 50 million population in Korea, about 14 million have more than 50 megabps to their home by fiber, okay? And now, right now, we are under the, the so-called Giga Internet Project. So we'll have 90% of people have more than, more than Giga BPS, at least, uh, by 2017. That's only three years away, okay? So this is one of, it's just a few of the attempts we are just trying to be competitive. And so if you look at the mobile internet, so, I guess this. I mean, I didn't didn't believe the number, but out of 50 million population, 30 million population people have not only cellular phone but LTE or LTA. So what is production in now is LTA service. It's about 100 mega, under 50 megabps, and we are the only, we are the first country who has nationwide service of LTA. Okay, what is under preparation is a so-called CA LTA. This will be three times more speed. I don't know why you need that much speed, but I mean, understand that Koreans are impatient, so they don't want to wait. And also, in terms of mobile spot, that we have giga of, giga, uh, nationwide giga, uh, giga Wi Fi service, and that has more than one giga BPS bandwidth there. But I mean, bandwidth is not the this, this part of thing you need to have the, the whole ecosystem. So, there is a something called Giga in Korea project that's on the way now, and it tries to build a whole ecosystem, not only the network, but all the applications and, and so on. And so the budget is that they actually asked for $1 billion, and they was turned away that they got only half of that. But that's not a small amount of money, I can imagine. And that's for the next eight years. So these are the kind of investment Korea is doing to, uh, to reverse this trend. So, and for, the, for the, my research network, so the name of my research network is CreoNet. So, in, in one word, is this a national science research network? That's the, that's the description. And it started in service in 1988. And so we are like a 25 years has been, we are in service. And we are supporting about 200 organizations. And we have 24 hour service there. And currently, we have 16 uh, regional centers and four, four, uh, four international pops. So the backbone is that we have, couple of, we have 200 gig backbone between Seoul and my center in Taejeon. And other centers are connected by either 40, 40 gig backbone or uh, branched into the like, tangent connections there. So I mean, if, you, if you look at the history of how they evolved, is that in 1990s that we have the, this routing service that has been operational. And then in, in early 2000, we just started, we introduced the hybrid network service. And then, then we started international links of the 100 gig, uh, 10 gig service to the, to the China and US. And from 2010, we have an upgrade. So in, in 2000, that we have 100 gig backbone, but this is 10, 10 of the 10 gig links, right? But from 2010 on, that we have 200 gig links that backbone there, and we have a Korea Ethernet service was the the, the, the equipment was upgraded to there. So I mean this is probably the easy way to look at it if you just have two users. So this is what you have in 1990s. So they have routing service and that's it. And in 2000 this is what they have, 
they can have the choice of the layer one, two, three services. And uh, the backbone there at the bottom was the 10 of the 10 gig link there. And in 2010, this is a new service. So basically, the backbone was upgrade to the 100 gig trunk. And then in the layer two, we introduced Korea Ethernet services. So I guess, I mean, this, I mean, the service architecture is not that different from the Surf, SurfNet 7 architecture here. And so, and I mean, but I mean, infrastructure is infrastructure. I mean, you have to have uh, applications. And out of 200 organizations and many domains we are supporting, these are the kind of areas that we are focusing on. They have, currently have a huge demand for the bandwidth and have an even, even bigger demand for the potential bandwidth in the future. So this is just one of the examples that we are supporting. This is one of the community, this radio astronomy. So these are people that have three radio telescopes, one in uh, Seoul and one in Jeju Island and one in Ulsan. So this is this, uh, believe me, it's just, just as far as you can spread out in, in Korea. Okay? And each one is um, connected to one, one gig links. And then this signal from the three radio, uh, three, three, three radio telescope has to be correlated in the, and the, at the central facility uh, that's located at KASI, that's the Korea Astronomy and Space Science Institute there. So basically what you're providing now is that we provide a virtual dedicated network for, the, for the, these people to work on. And of course, the, these people are not working alone. They are they collaborate internationally. So that is, that's the kind of bandwidth we're, we're supporting it. So this is what, what we are doing supporting now. So, but these people are got more greedier. So they, they say, well, each radio, tele, each radio telescope, they, have four, they are producing four bands. And each band is 8 gigabps. So each radio telescope is producing 32 gigabps. And they, you have three of them connected together. So we need a bandwidth of 96 gigabps. And they say, can we do anything about that one? So basically what we have now, this is what we are, support, I mean, we are experimenting in. We have a link between Seoul and Daejeon. We have dark fiber link that's under our control. So, so basically, we are, we are trying to experiment to support this humongous traffic experiment with, the, with, the, with the, our dark fiber. So hopefully, if it is successful in our next upgrade, it will be just, just be part of our regular services there. So in terms of the international, international dimension, and Gloria is the one that got us one step ahead. So this was the currently consortium of about 15 countries, including Netherlands. And uh, the idea is very simple, just con connect the world by ring topology, but each country is responsible for their own segment. Okay. So Korea is re responsible for the uh, link from the Hong Kong to Korea to the, to the States. And we have two separate links, that one goes to uh, post, uh, Pacific Northwest Gigapop in Seattle and the other links to, to Starlight Facility in Chicago. So this is uh, what we have. So we have the, the KL lights, so have a four entry point in some sense. Uh, so it can go to Hong Kong or Daejeon in my institute, or Seattle or Chicago there. It's connected to the, to the, the other side of the world. And uh, this, uh, I mean, I mean, this all the connection is necessary for the collaboration. So there are several collaborations that's going on between partners in, in Europe and, and the U.S. In, among the Asian partners. And uh, we are the ones that are supporting this, this kind of collaboration. These are the infrastructure we are supporting this kind of collaborations. So we have to also have to think about the, what, what next for the, our architecture. So, I mean, the timing for the, our next architecture will be like 2016 time frame. So, I mean, we have a tendency, I mean, we are just taking a close look at soft, software-defined network, so that seems to be such a prominent technology. But I, I, I think it will be, take, I mean, there has to be several things have to sort it out before it becomes a part of the execution plan. So, that's, so this is, these are the kind of what we are working on to stay as competitive as Netherlands. Okay, thank you.